In this episode of creating a multiplayer game using Unity's ML API networking system, we'll be synchronizing the firing of physics-based rocket weapons in our game. Our car players will be equipping their first battle weapons and learning the art of destruction. Today we'll be dabbling with the art of the network transform, network rigid body, and of course our friendly neighborhood server RPCs. So check out the description below for the links to this episode's starter packages. And before we hop into the code, I just wanted to ask that you stick around until the very end of this video. As I continue to build the series, I'd like to hear from you and get your feedback on what's coming next. I have an important question to ask you all and I need your feedback as I decide the next steps in this series. So stick around to the end and join in on helping to shape this series future for you and those to come. So enough of my rambling, let's hop into the code. All right, so let's get started. So today we're gonna be completing three steps. So first we're gonna be using our pre-configured rocket prefab and setting it up so it can be synchronized across the network. The second thing we're gonna be doing is adding our updated rocket prefab to our network manager so it can be recognized as a networked object. And finally, we're gonna add some code to our car player script that will allow us to synchronize our rocket firing among all our players in our game. So let's start with step one, configuring our rocket prefab to be synchronized across the network. Assuming you are using episode six starter package with netcode for game objects enabled, we're gonna go ahead and quickly add the rocket prefab episode six starter package. Once the rocket prefab package is added to our project, we'll go ahead and navigate to our prefab folder and open our rocket prefab. So the first thing we will be doing is something we should be pretty familiar with. We'll be adding our network object component. So let's navigate over to our inspector view, scroll down to the bottom, and select add component. Let's type in here network object component and select it from the list. As you already know, our network object allows us to track any particular game object across the network and it allows this object to now be managed by our network manager. So next thing we're gonna add is a component that we have mentioned previously but have yet to use, the network transform. As you already know, a network transform when attached to a game object with a network object component allows you to track the object's transform, position, rotation, and scale across the network. So in our case, attaching a network transform to our rocket will make it super simple and easy to share our transform data across the network. Anywho, let's go ahead and add our network transform to our rocket. Let's scroll down to our add component button and type network. Let's go ahead and select network transform. Once it's added, you'll notice a few different attributes that it has. The first being the ability to decide what components of our transform we would like to track across the network. So we won't be changing any of these selections in our particular game, but in your own personal game, you might want to deselect something like scale or position, just depending on what matters to you and what you might not want to track across the network. So this isn't something that I've personally tested, but it might actually be wise to uncheck what you're not really interested in tracking across the network because it might save you on network performance or you know, in some small minor data transfers, but likelihood it's not gonna be a big impact, but you can test it out on your own to see how it might impact your game. So now that we are tracking our transform across the network, we only need to add one more component to completely set up our rocket. Because we are cool game developers, we like physics, all the physics. So in our case, our rocket already has a rigid body component, but even though we've already added a network transform to our object, we won't get the most accurate positional data if we don't add a physics rigid body component to be tracked across the network. In order to track our rigid body across the network, we need to add the network rigid body component to our project. Just like adding our network transform, let's just head over to our add component button, type in network and select network rigid body. Just to note, at this point of creating this video, this is the most reliable way to add the network rigid body component to an object. As far as I've been able to tell, the network rigid body component does not show up in the component file menu located at the top of the Unity editor. So I'm not sure if this is a glitch, but there's a chance that it might get fixed in the future. But for now, I would just depend on using add component. As you'll note, there are no attributes we can modify using our inspector. So let's go ahead and keep on moving. One kind of cool thing to know about the network rigid body is that it sets all of our client's game objects, rigid bodies to kinematic. So this allows the server to manage all physics simulations, ensuring synchronized position for all players. So this is probably not a particularly important note, but I just want to note it because I thought it was pretty interesting and something just to be aware of as you're working with rigid bodies in the future. Now that we've added all our necessary components to our game object, let's exit our prefab. All right, so it's time to move on to step number two. 
So step number two is probably gonna be the easiest thing that we do today. So all we're really gonna be doing is taking our rocket prefab and adding it to our network manager object as a network prefab. So let's select our network manager object in our scene hierarchy, navigate over to our network manager component and our inspector and select the plus icon under the network prefab section. Now, all we need to do is add our rocket prefab to this section so that it can be registered to be tracked. To do this quickly, let's go ahead and select the small dot next to this row and search for our rocket by typing in rocket and then selecting it. And just like that, our rocket is set up to be tracked across the network in our game. With our rocket now configured and being tracked across the network, it's time to add some code to allow our car players to fire rockets from themselves and set up the firing mechanism to be tracked across the network. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. So let's navigate over to our assets folder, go into our script folder, enter our car folder, and then open the car player script. So once we navigate to our script, we're really going to only be doing two things, adding a server RPC method to allow us to synchronize our rocket firing on our network and adding the functionality to fire a rocket from our car on a key press. But before we do that, our first step will be to add some basic variables for associating our rocket to our car player. And because in the future I'll be adding other abilities to our car player, we're going to go ahead and generalize these variables so they can be used for different car weapons or abilities. So just to save some time, I'm just going to go ahead and paste in the variables that we'll need and then I'll explain them as we move forward. So our ability prefab will be our variable that will hold our current weapon or ability type. Then our ability spawn point will be the point in space that we spawn our ability prefab when it is instantiated. And our ability spawn name will be used for us to locate the spawn point we'd like to use for instantiating the weapon or ability. The goal will be to have different spawn points for each ability that will be associated with the car player prefab. And this will allow us to switch between them pretty easily. Finally, there's ability force. Ability force is just associated with weapons that use a rigid body and it allows us to add a slight force to say propel our rocket forward or some other object or ability forward. Alright, with our variable set up, let's create our server RPC function that will manage the firing of our rocket in our game. So to save some time, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste in the code for the function and then I'm just going to discuss what it does just to make it a little bit easier for all of us as we move through. Since most of this code is not ML API or network gaming specific and I'm working off the general assumption that most viewers of this video are familiar with Unity, I'm just going to go ahead and give a brief overview of things that are just general Unity stuff and then I'll stop and discuss the more network based code when we get there. So the first thing we're doing is just making sure that we have a valid ability prefab assigned to our car player. Once we do that, we are finding our ability spawn point and instantiating our game object at our spawn point position. Now this is where our network based code comes in. On the next line, we are using ML API method called spawn. We haven't covered this particular method before, but as you might've guessed, this method spawns our network object onto our server. Though in the line before that, we instantiate the game object into the world of the local player, in order for the game object to appropriately appear for all players on the network, we must call the spawn method on the network object. This essentially tells ML API that this object has appeared in our network game and that it can now be tracked by our network manager. As you'll note, we're using a RPC function to call the spawn method, so it ensures that the server is the only one who is calling this method and we won't get any weird errors. Another thing that you might note is that the spawn method is a method called from the network object class. So any network object has the ability to call this function to spawn itself in the network game if needed. Once our object has been spawned onto our network, we're just going to add a velocity parameter to our object to kind of propel it forward at a particular force. In some cases, an ability may not need to apply velocity, but our rocket will be getting fired forward. So we're going to add some type of velocity to make sure that it propels forward when the player presses some button. All right, now that our fire rocket server RPC function is complete, let's add the ability for this function to be called on a button press. So in our update function of our car player script, we're going to add some pretty straightforward code. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is add an if is local player condition because we only want this method to be fired on the local player. Once we do that, we're going to add an input if condition that will fire our rocket anytime we press the space key. Now within our input key if condition, we're going to go ahead and put in our method fire rocket server RPC function. And with that, our car player script is all set up and ready to fire some rockets. 
But before we can build our game and test it, we need to do some quick updates to our car player prefab now that we've updated our car player script. So let's go ahead and head back to our navigator and open up our car player prefab again. All right, now that we're within our car player prefab, we're gonna need to navigate over to our car player script in our inspector view and make some very quick updates to get things working. First, we're gonna go ahead and assign our rocket as our default ability prefab. So let's go ahead and drag our rocket over from our asset view and drop it on the ability prefab. Next, we're gonna go ahead and assign our desired spawn point in the ability spawn parameter field for our rocket. So let's go ahead and grab that from our car player. It's already nested within our car player prefab and drag it over onto this particular variable. Next, we're just gonna move down to our ability spawn name field and we're just gonna enter in here rocket spawn point. This particular parameter will only really be used when we're switching between our car player's weapons and abilities, but for now we're just gonna enter this and this will work fine. And finally, in our ability force field, we're just gonna type in here 50. You can honestly experiment with any values you like, but this is my personal preference for the rocket ability force, so we're gonna keep it at 50. And with that, we are all set up to try our rocket fire mechanism in our game. So let's go ahead and build our game and see it in action. All right, our games are up and running. So let's go ahead and flip over to our editor and start as host. As per usual, let's move our character a little bit, but we're gonna position our character so that we can kind of see the rockets being fired in both views. Now let's hop into our built game and select client. Now let's go ahead and move our character forward. Now to show that this is working appropriately, I'm going to be switching back and forth pretty quickly between both game screens so we can see that our rocket firing is working. So all right, let's try to fire some rockets. And as you can see, our rockets are working perfectly. All we did was combine our knowledge of server RPCs and use the network transform and network rigged body to track our rockets across the network. So this is just scratching the surface of what we can do with these capabilities. And I'm excited for us to dive into this even more in the future. And with that, we have leveraged the server RPCs, network transform, and network rigid bodies to get our rockets working in our game. As I mentioned, this is just scratching the surface of what we can do with these capabilities. In our next episode of the series, we will cover synchronized times and timing events in ML API. To be very candid, time and timing events can be somewhat complicated as it begins to deal with the unavoidable aspects of latency. So my goal will be to create a normal walkthrough video of the implementation of timing events in Unity, but I need your help. More importantly, I need your feedback. If you would also desire, I would like to create a video that covers the basics of network latency, how multiplayer games overcome this problem, and some of the key principles that multiplayer games use to deal with this issue. But I need to know that that's something you would like for me to cover. This particular topic can get very detailed and confusing very quickly, so I want to make sure that I do it right. It will take a considerable amount of effort on my end to create this video, so it will likely take some time for me to put it all together. So if this is something you'd like to see in an upcoming video, please leave a comment below letting me know that you are interested in learning more about this latency topic and I'll start working hard to make that video for you. I'd absolutely love to do it, but I want to make sure it's something that you all care about. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you got something from this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing to my channel by clicking that subscribe button below and joining the family. I absolutely love making these videos and I really do hope in some way that this has been inspiring you to make that game you've always wanted to make. Thank you again for watching and gracing me with your time. I really appreciate it. Y'all have a great one and until next time, peace. I think that's it, boys. I think that's it.